Hi, I'm Gregory. Thank you for coming by. If you're here for the first time, welcome to Not Only Code, a channel where I share advice, thoughts and ideas on how to become a better, more successful software developer. Today, I'm going to talk a bit about engineering management and what does my role as an engineering manager look like, what do I do and how uh, how it differs from the role of a software developer from, from the role of lead developer that I had before. So engineering management. Today I'm talking about what do engineering managers do. And I must, oh, I must already warn you that I don't have a very specific answer because that role differs quite a lot from my experience from company to company. Uh, in larger companies this role is more narrow, there are fewer responsibilities that engineering managers have. In smaller companies where they are not uh, many people performing different roles, engineering manager can take a bunch of different roles uh, together. Also the name of this role I noticed that it's not very consistent. I see engineering manager quite often uh, but also I see head of, head of development, head of engineering uh, that might perform the same duties. Tech lead in some companies might also perform as an engineering manager so you can see this role under many different names. In software development we have uh, four different parts. Product, people, processes and well, I can't think of anything uh, that starts with P, it's technology. So you've got these four different parts. And now in different companies, in different environments, these parts can be split to four different people. So normally product would be responsibility of product manager. Process would be responsibility of project manager, maybe scrum master. Technology would be responsibility of software architect or tech lead. And people is the, the job of engineering manager. But that's, you know, uh, that's the reality of large companies. In smaller environments or in environments where these, the, these uh, responsibilities are not uh, defined very strictly, these can be shared uh, among maybe two or, or three people. Let me give you some examples from my career. So my first role as a manager, I was promoted and I had the title uh, head of engineering. But the team that I was leading uh, was quite young and not very experienced. So I was responsible also for the part of technology. I was working with my developers closely. I was helping them to drive the technological initiatives. I was helping them to solve the, uh, the, the actual programming problems. Uh, I was also partially responsible for the process part. So we didn't have dedicated uh, Scrum Master. So I was responsible uh, for, uh, for, for dealing with the process part. Right now in my role, uh, the uh, technology part is delegated to tech leads. Uh, the process part is something that I share with, with some other people. People part is my responsibility and we have product managers that deal with the product. So now I wear fewer hats. Uh, I don't deal with so many other responsibilities. I mainly focus on people, but not only. So again, the four parts, uh, but they are very different realities, very different environments, very different companies. Uh, under this video, I link to article by Pat Kua, where he explains five archetypes of engineering manager. I highly recommend reading it. You can see how this role can differ from case to case. People part, the main scope of engineering manager. What does it mean that you're responsible for people? What does it actually mean? So. As engineering manager, my main goal is to ensure that the team that I manage is the best version of itself. I need to ensure that any obstacles that happen in the team are removed so that our work is more smooth and so that we can keep improving all the time. How do I do it? There are a couple of things. Uh, first, coaching. So I work closely with each of my team members and I help them to uh, determine their goals and objectives. So there are things that they would like to achieve as individuals and there are things that we need to achieve as a team, as a company. And I try to align it and figure out uh, what this particular developer will be responsible for and how I can help them to become a better developer while contributing also to the goals of, of the team and the company. That is done via uh, formal goals and objectives. That is done via uh, personal development plan that is done in some cases if uh, my team member is uh, underperforming via performance improvement plans. Uh, also the very important part of my role is to do regular one-on-one -on -one. so I have uh, meetings with each of my team member be it developers or, or testers or technical writers and uh, during that meetings we are discussing their career their progress uh, 
any feedback, anything that they want to uh, share that can help them uh, and me to make our team better. The second part is team building. I foster the team culture. I need to ensure that my team feels that they are a team, that we have a common goal, that we are going the same direction. And that part consists of things like doing maybe some uh, team retrospectives, uh, like, you know, uh, organizing team activities, uh, also sometimes solving personal conflicts or disagreements. Basically, whatever happens within the team and whatever issue appears within the team is mainly my responsibility to solve. An important part of team building is also that everyone in the team feels safe and feels comfortable. This psychological comfort is extremely important and I need to ensure that everyone in the team is heard, that everyone is understood and that we can all, whenever we have some disagreements, we can hear everyone and we can find a way to move forward. Something related to team building is actually building the team, which means I am responsible for the hiring process, for determining whether we will hire someone or not. Uh, I am responsible for uh, maintaining our pace. So if I know that someone will be leaving the company, I need to ensure that we start looking for a replacement. I determine their requirements and together with my team, we we'll later make the final decision whether, whether we can make an offer or not. The next part is being a kind of a connection, a liaison between the team and the other parts of the company. So if we work with some other teams, I need to ensure that we have a, uh, that our communication is smooth, that everyone understands each other, that we can work efficiently with other teams. Uh, that also means that I bring some messages to my team. If there is some feedback about our work, that goes from me. And the other way around, if my team has some feedback to the company leadership or to other teams, uh, I collect that information and I ensure to pass it uh, forward so that if there are some issues, uh, cross team issues, so that we can, we can resolve them. And finally, probably the most uh, boring part of the work is the administrative part, so I am responsible for uh, managing the uh, holidays to ensure that we always have at least uh, one developer and tester that can uh, help our customers. Uh, I ensure that people actually use their pay time off. Uh, I am responsible for determining the uh, raises. I do the performance review, etc., etc. So all the administrative work uh, is also part of my responsibility. And you might be wondering where is the technology part, where is the coding part, uh, where is the dealing with actual engineering stuff, like what does make me engineering manager and not just a manager. So I didn't mention it earlier because that might not be part of engineering manager's responsibility uh, in some companies. Of course, as engineering manager, you need to understand the technology, you need to understand what your team does so that you can work closely uh, with your team and, and help them solving problems, but you might not be directly involved in making technical decisions. Uh, so in my case, I that depends on the company where I worked. In, in some companies in the past, I was more involved in the technology part, now I'm involved a bit less, uh, but that's still an important part of my job and, and one that I uh, try to ensure that I, I always spend some amount of time on, on this. While writing code is not my responsibility anymore, I try to stay up to date with our code base, with the technical decisions that we make, so that if needed, I can join the conversation, I can join the discussion, I can uh, sometimes lead the discussion to ensure that we have some consensus. And even though I will not be implementing the solution, I need to understand what we are doing so that we can make informed good decision so that we can have a, a good direction. And this is a part that uh, some engineering managers really miss when they take a manager's role because, you know, writing code is not your responsibility anymore and that's something that you've been doing for years. That's something that got you to the position where you're now. Uh, in my case, I still write code after hours. I sometimes have opportunity to write code at work uh, I do not take any big features to implement because uh, that would take me ages to do. Uh, but I like to take some uh, refactoring. I like to, to pick up some bug that I can uh, that I can fix so that I stay in touch with the code base so that I can always run our platform locally so that I can jump in and help whenever 
writing code is what is needed the most right now in the team. Uh, in the future, I will show you how my day as an engineering manager exactly looks like. Uh, I will not cover it today, uh, but I will certainly uh, do it in the future. Spoiler, it's a lot of meetings, it's a lot of calls, it's a lot of discussions. Uh, and often my day is split into small chunks where I can do work alone and where I need to work together with other people. But that's for another time.